वसुदेव सुतंदेव कंसचाणूरमर्दन देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोर्गमय मृत्योर मृत गमय ओ शांति 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 इट इज ऑफर सिलिटेशन टू लॉर्ड कृष्ण the embodiment of supreme bliss who came to establish dharma and punish the wicked let us pray to him to lead us from unreal to real to lead us from ignorance to knowledge to lead us from death to immortality we have been studying chapter 6 of the bhagavad gita which is called the yoga of meditation meditation is one of the royal paths to approach the divine but there are certain preparations we should be clearly aware of to practice yoga of meditation and that is described in the bhagavad gita by lord krishna himself how we should prepare ourselves to step into the practice of yoga of meditation everything has to go in a different way there is no ambiguity in terms of practice so the result depends upon how we practice so we should know how to practice how to be determined and so on in the last class i dwelt to the verse 21 sukham atyantikam etad buddhigrahasya mati indriyam veti yatra achaivayam sitas chalati tatvatah when the yogi feels that infinite bliss which can be grasped by the pure intellect and which transcends the senses and established therein in never moves from the reality that is once a person reaches that highest state of experiencing the bliss then it doesn't want to come back for any reason he doesn't want to divert from that reality of experiencing the supreme bliss that means he feels fulfillment and complete satisfaction and enjoys everlasting peace and bliss that's all so what is needed here is to reach that state every mahatma every spiritual teacher has said repeatedly to keep the mind pure 
keeping the mind pure everybody knows it but how difficult it is to keep the mind pure in spite of our intense desire to be perfect pure still bad thoughts come sensual cravings occur things happen we may not like it they do come so our primary fight is how to stop this negative ideas coming and disturbing us when we are practicing meditation but one need not be disheartened it can be brought into control and as i said earlier we have got tremendous treasure house in ramakrishna vivekananda literature treasure house mine of spiritual ideas mine do we have some spare time to read them that's the first step to get into the state of purity swadhyaya pravachanadhyam na pramaditavyam regular study every day must be done even though you are tired exhausted whatever may be the reason we should never stop reading a portion of the scripture giving you spiritual ideas it is very very important and that is the source of strength source of strength scriptures here sri ramakrishna vivekananda literature there is the i should say current effective inspiring transforming scriptures all the direct disciples of shiva they have gems each one has given tremendous idea about practice of spirituality but we are blindly closing the eyes and behaving we don't know anything this is solve the problem unless you know you can't get out of in perfection it is as simple as that so swami sharadananda ji with regards to purity he says what is the effect of purity as the mind becomes more and more indrawn more and more concentrated the wild roamings of the mind will stop and you will experience inner joy and ineffable bliss well we have told many times that we offer our worship and do japa of our ishta devata that is the chosen deity god has infinite forms that's the beauty of god just as human beings are infinite god's forms are infinite because that shows his abundant grace he wants to be available to the devotee according to his choice he gives that tremendous freedom to us to select any god or goddess you want any god and you are worshiping the same god that's what swami shadan ji says the name of your ishta chosen deity is verily brahman 
this will come only by taking the name just do it result comes by itself same bhakta pranashyati lord krishna declares in the gita my devotee never perishes that means he who repeats god's name never perishes he may be passing through difficult circumstances situations problems stress and strain but god will make the way clear provided you hold on to the divine name with great shraddha and atmavishwas these two are very essential for any spiritual aspirant practicing any yoga shraddha and vishwas so swami ji says keep doing japa and do it as much as possible but do not give that up so today i did not do japa what is the given reasons like that does it make the result of doing japa gone you have not done so the result is not there even though you give fantastic reasons by practice a taste for repeating lord's name will come and you will know peace and bliss in fact when i was a college student of course i was in bangalore during my studies during vacation myself and my brother twin brother we would go to about 100 miles away from bangalore it's called chintamani the name of the place there our father was executive engineer so we used to go and stay spend the vacation and then come back there near our house so just 3 minutes walk just 3 minutes walk there was a temple of shri ramchandra and there was a small image of uh, brahma chaitanya maharaj brahma chaitanya from maharashtra gondavali brahma chaitanya very very good very famous saint in maharashtra he is well known his practice is always repeating ramas name 24 hours whether verbally or mentally whatever it is and there was a small group belonging to belonging to the brahmachatriya sect i still remember his face also he had a he had grown a beard not that he wanted to he wanted to look like a saint that was not the reason the reason is he didn't want to waste time in shaving the beard let it go what is it what is that but what he would do i have not seen a person like that in my life he used to repeat rama's name loudly with talam jay jay ram 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 continuously not only repeating that with talam he would circumambulate the temple in the temple inside there is a production i can do here we don't have that possibility of doing production there there is a compound inside that compound the temple so inside the compound you can walk walk around there is nothing the empty space and he would walk and walk and walk and walk
see in my younger days how interest it created me when i saw him i stood there to watch him to watch him tears were flowing tears not artificial he is not seeing anybody he doesn't care whether people praise him or criticize him he is not bothered about that if i see his eyes and body it would, i would feel the whole thing is focused inside continuously do continuously do. and why he would shed tears it is tears of joy tears of joy the tears of joy show the purity level if you are pure you will shed tears of joy the repeating god's name by repeating shri ram krishna's name you have taken shri ram krishna's name how most fortunate on this earth the total identification with the deity should be there total and ready to sacrifice anything for the sake of the divine that attitude of intense tyaga renunciation must be built up it is the attachment in so many ways blocks our spiritual journey attachment to the place attachment to the friends attachment to relations etc etc so you will have the first taste of real peace and bliss provided you practice repeating god's name continuously the same thing shri rakshi krishna tells in different way same idea sarveshu kaleshu mamanusma how many times i have repeated this still i wrote to love to repeat sarveshu kaleshu all the time mamanusma remember me that one that one sentence itself is enough you don't need any instruction any uh, anything to know it well lord krishna has said this sarveshu kaleshu mahavanaswar let me repeat it so in this case mam anu krishna is referring to himself but you can refer that to your chosen deity suppose you are worshiping rama sarveshu kaleshu mahavanaswar all the time repeat ramas name repeat kali's name what is needed is to repeat divine name that's the purpose so my akhandanand ji he said well there is no happiness here here means in this world no peace what you are trying to get some kind of happiness or some kind of peace is nothing but a shadow it is fake this is not our place how oh, nice he tells this world is not our place this narrowness selfishness what is this world 150% selfish not 100% 150% the more you are selfish the more narrow you become the more selfish you are the more impure you are with that impure mind how can you ever think of god if the idea doesn't come to you i why now god like that 
So, Swami Vijnanandji, another direct disciple, he said, let us make our minds pure. Our immediate attention should be how to make the mind pure. The rest will be easy. And we shall attain spiritual bliss comparable to nothing else in life. And Swami Vijnanandji, they are all illumined souls. He says, these worldly pleasures which people continuously chase, they are but a speck of dust when weighed against that great mountain of joy. See how he expresses it. This worldly pleasure should not even be compared at all. He is telling them to the dust, speck of dust, the two. That's about 21st, 21st verse. Now we shall go to next verse, 22nd. Yam labdhva cha param labam manyate nadhikam tataha yasmin stito na dukke na guru nāpi vichalyate Which having obtained the yogi thinks there is no other gain superior to it. Wherein established, the yogi is not moved even by heavy sorrow. He is not perturbed. He is not disturbed. Once he is well established in his true, in the experience of his true Atman, the real Atman inside, dwelling in the heart, once he experiences the taste of the joy and when he study, he never deviates from that, come what may. That's the point. Having gained this joy, the yogi thinks there is no greater gain beyond it. To him, all the joys of the earth, all the pleasures of the Swarga, heavenly regions, wealth, dominion, power, honor, fame, they are all momentary, transient, insignificant, worthless. There cannot be any stronger word than this. And we foolishly pursue the worldly pleasures and get locked up there. And in the midst of the heaviest sorrow, the yogi remains firm and unshaken as a rock. Weapons may cut his body, but his soul is unmovable. Lightning and heat, shower and cold may touch his body, his soul remains untouched. Bereavements may come to him, insult and ignominy may, attra may attack him, his peace is undisturbed. For he has gone beyond the body. He wears a body in the eyes of the world. In reality, he lives in the Atman, Atma Loka, in the world of the Atman. He is not under the control of any modifications of matter. He is established in Divine. He lives and moves and has his being, even on his earth plane, in the life eternal. So, the bliss of Atman is most superior to all other gains one finds in the world. Having got the gain of Atman, the man of knowledge is totally fixed in it 
and does not turn in any other way and is ever satisfied in his blissful experience. Whatever worldly gains one gets are perishable in course of time. Even if the things remain, the man one day will have to vacate his body, which invariably dies at some point of time. That, the, that wisdom should give us awakening. Perishable. Nothing remains with us. There was a person, a devotee in Houston, a very young, young girl, we should say. She had come to Ganges Monastery. She visited Ashrama here. She used to come to Houston whenever I, whenever I go, every year I go there. Whatever reason she got cancer. Good looking, well educated, earning, she got cancer. But she was taking treatment as usual, coming to Ashrama. And when you see her, you can't make out she was having cancer at all. She used, she used to take video of the activities in Houston, whenever we go. And that lady, she forethought, well, definitely this is terminal disease. I, maybe a few days more, a few months more, uh, one or two years more, you may leave. But after this body will go, and she used her wisdom. She had some insurance policy about hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand more than hundred thousand dollars. Say hundred thousand. She immediately made a will that that should go to Vedanta City, Houston. Recently, I heard somebody came from Houston. They said that girl passed away. But her devotion to Ashwa was supreme, unshakable. And she knew very well this experience in this world is perishable. Nothing is permanent here. Why should I have anything at all? So before he, everybody, nobody ever knew that she had made that will that the whole thing should go to Houston Center. After passing away only they came to know. Young lady, very young, maybe 30, 35, maybe. Not even married. So, Even if the things remain, man one day will have to vacate his body, which invariably dies at some point of time. But why people struggle keeping multiple properties? Uh, increasing properties, increasing. So thereby making the mind more and more complicated, more and more tense. Anyway, from this standpoint, the worldly gains cannot really be called as such since they are of a short duration of time. It means the loss appears as it were gain. The loss appears as if it were a gain. Absolute peace, freed from the misery of cycle of birth and death, the infinite happiness gained through the realization of Atman, these are really said to be supreme gain. 
Other things you should not call it as gain at all. It is a wrong word. The man of knowledge, therefore, having obtained the supreme gain, that is, having the experience of the Atman, does not aspire for anything of the world and its gains. He does not even want to be the ruler of the universe. When Dhruva meditated upon Lord Narayan, Lord Narayan was pleased and he came and gave darshan to him and asked for him, as for a boon. Oh Lord, I don't want any boon. I am 100% satisfied, my joy is complete, I am having 100% peace of mind, I don't want anything, I will be with you all the time, finished. Then Lord himself said, no, you have to rule the kingdom. But there is a difference, you be there as my agent. Nimitta Matram, Bhava Sabbhi Sathya, Arjun, Krishna says to Arjun, be an instrument, I do everything. And Krishna, the Lord says, Narayana said to him, you rule the kingdom for the sake of humanity. I will be with you all the time. All the time, 24 hours I will be with you. So, even Nachiketas also rejected all the gifts offered by Yama, all the temptations, he just rejected. So the man of wisdom should rely upon the words of the Lord and should not hanker after things of the world and its momentary gains. Just as a man taking bath in the ocean gets the merit of taking bath in all the rivers, all the rivers join the ocean, you know. Even so, one who has gained the experience of Atman has, in a way, gained all the things of the universe. In case of worldly gains, what one gains for him? What one gains from one thing may not gain from another thing. But he who has realized Atman gets complete fulfillment and contentment. Santrupto Bhavati Complete contentment. So one should earnestly strive for realization of Atman. We are seeking for we are seeking happiness, isn't it? Seek the real happiness. That real happiness is in Atman, in experiencing the divine with our heart. Well, there was a mighty demon, probably you all know, his name was Hiranyakashipu, who had won all the three worlds of heaven, earth and hell, and had thus become very proud, very boastful. He thought he is uh, the most supreme ruler of the universe. He assumed that he could defeat even Lord Vishnu, which is valor. He went to the extent that he had enforced a law that everybody would worship him instead of gods and other deities. But, however, his little son Prahlad refused to accept his commands and continued to worship Lord Vishnu with complete devotion. father became very angry. He ordered his soldiers to throw his own son, throw him down a hill, praying fervently and having full faith in Lord Vishnu, Prahlad did not retract from this word. True to his faith, the Lord rescued him at the last moment. Then Hiranyakashipu became much more angry. He invoked the help of his sister Holika, who had a boon that she could walk through the fire unharmed to do away with his son. The wicked aunt agreed to the evil desires of his brother 
and entered the fire with her nephew Prakhlad. Holika will not be burnt, but Prakhlad would be burnt. That's how they thought. However, the brother and sister had forgot that Holika could only enter the fire alone or she would perish. Thus, blessed by Lord Vishnu, the child Prakhlad remained unharmed, but Holika got burnt and died instantly. That means Prakhlad was unshaken. As I said, Atma Vishwas, Shraddha, these two were very prominent in Prakhlad's life. And he had that divine experience of joy, he was unshaken. There is a small instance about Swami Turiyanandaji. He was a master of the senses. Once he sat down to meditate, external troubles could not reach the inner sanctuaries of his consciousness. He had a wonderful capacity to dissociate his mind from the body and had many times undergone operations without the necessity of any anesthesia. He had an extraordinary fortitude as well as a living faith on God. That is uh, uh, most fantastic. How much faith he had and how his faith was matured faith. Once he had gone to eye doctor, he had some eye problem. By mistake, nitric acid was applied to one of his eyes. By mistake. Nitric acid. When the mistake was found out and everybody got alarmed, Suryanandaji, what was his reaction? He simply smiled and said, Well, it is the will of the mother. Can anybody say like that? Fortunately, the eyes could be saved. Whatever Swami Turiyanji would do, he would. He would apply the whole strength of his soul to it. One found him always sitting erect, even in his illness, even while on an easy chair. This simple physical characteristic represented, as it were, his mental attitude. He was unbending in not allowing Maya to catch him. He was a person of great spiritual intensity. That's about Turiyanji. And recently we know Ramana Maharshi. You must read those lives. You must read the living life. Ravana practiced tapas or deep meditation in shrines, cave and hills in and around Thirunamalai, where he was known as Brahman Swami. From 1909 to 1916, he lived in the Rupaksha cave. During his days of tapas, mischievous boys pelted stones at him. But Ramana was ever peaceful and calm through the strength of meditation and penance. He was, his life was one continued meditation. Ananda Anubhavam. He established peace within and encouraged others to do the same. His Ramana was a living example of the teaching of the Upanishads. His life was at once the message and the philosophy of his teachings. He spoke to the hearts of people. His message, he gave to the world the grand but simple message of his great life. What is that message? Know thyself. Inquire 
Who am I? Make the mind calm. Free yourself from all thoughts other than the simple thought of the self or Atman. Dive deep into the chambers of your heart. Find out the real infinite I. Rest there peacefully forever and become identical with the Supreme Self. Sri Ramana said, The world is so unhappy because it is ignorant of the true self. Man's real nature is happiness. Happiness is inborn in the true self. Man's search for happiness is an unconscious search for his true self. The true self is imperishable. Therefore, when a man finds it, he finds a happiness which does not come to an end. Ramana Maharshi was operated four times after he was diagnosed with a malignant tumor in his upper left arm above the elbow. A meteor hit the sky at 8.47 p.m. on the 14th of April 1950 when Sri Ramana Maharshi left his mortal coil and entered Mahasamadhi. In the heart of humanity, the saint shall live forever, guiding, encouraging, goading and inspiring, so that millions and millions might seek and find the great truth that Ramana realized. Sri Ramana expounded the Vedanta philosophy not through bookish knowledge but through practical experience. His teachings imparted through all absorbing silence embodied the highest ideals and the ultimate reaches in divine realization. So that is the way it is. Let us try to approach the Atman dwelling in our heart. We don't have to run anywhere. God is in our own chamber of heart. We should somehow learn the technique of meditation and do practice. That's all. We have to do. Practice is the only way to fight the evil in this world. So hold on to chosen deity. Keep on repeating God's name. Try to meditate with full attention. Develop Shraddha and Atma Vishwas. Then God Himself will pave the way to show you, to give experience of immense peace and joy. Let us continue next Tuesday. Om Vasudeva Sutandevam Kamsa Chanu Ramardhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagad Gurum Let us offer our salutations to Lord Krishna, the embodiment of bliss, who came to establish Dharma and punish the wicked. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.